A lot of times uh, people act like they're a secret disciple. There's no such thing as a secret disciple. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are the salt of the earth. I'm telling you, we're not going to tiptoe around. We're, listen, that's one thing. I, I, I don't like the timidity in the church. The timidity in the church is testimony to our carnality. Because the Bible said the righteous will be what? Bold as a lion. Woo. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I've got to talk to you a minute, Pastor. Uh, we've known Pastor David and uh, Shirley for good Lord, years and years and years. But I was sitting over there and the Lord said, uh, uh, I'm giving you a mission. I said, okay, what mission are you giving me? And here it is. I'm, I'm just going to invite myself back because I want to do a school here, and I want to do a school here. God said, I want you to get up and tell Pastor David you want to do a school here on the subject of mystic mysteries and sacred secrets. If ever there's a generation and a time when God will reveal. See, you better study the Bible. All the hidden secret mysteries of God are just now being revealed. They were shut up from generations past. But now, say now. There's never been a season like now. I'll tell you, that's what the shepherd's rod's about for th this year. It says, the evil forces were ruling and raging until the ancient of days. We lived through an in, in until moment, didn't we? And I'll tell you what, things are different. And so we're going to talk about, even today, mystic mysteries and sacred secrets. The Bible said every one of them are hidden in something somewhere. Oh, they're hidden in Christ. That's why we need to know more about Christ. All the secret mysteries and, and sacred secrets and mystic mysteries lie hidden. It says in Colossians 1, they lie hidden in Christ. Uh, you say, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know anything about secrets. Put down Deuteronomy. Can you pop this on the board? Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord, but the things that are revealed belong unto us and to our generation, our descendants from now on. God has chosen this time in history to start revealing his secrets. Look, there it is. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of the Bible. Oh, listen, we need the sacred secrets and the mystic mysteries. And I'll tell you what, it's pretty amazing. So I'm inviting myself. We'll work, we'll work with your schedule any way you want to do it. But we're going to have a school. Um, it says, the secret things belong to the Lord, but those things which are revealed... We better open our eyes and see what God's doing. Uh, he says, uh, he said, I'm going to, anything that's been revealed, you, you can get it. It's yours. Yeah. I'm telling you, I like John, isn't it? John 10, 1, said John 10, 3 says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. John 10, 27 said, they'll run away from other voices. Now, I'm going to tell you how to amplify the voice of God. You ready? Yeah. Intimacy. Yeah. Getting close. Getting intimate with Lord. See, my wife and I have been married all these years. If she calls me and I go, who is this? Well, see, I should know whether she's sad or happy just by, just by the cadence of her voice. We need to be more intimate with the Lord. We need to be my sheep. Listen, Matthew 13, 16, 17. Pop that one up there if you will. Matthew 13, 16, 17. Jesus says, blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your ears for they hear. Many, many long to see what you see and couldn't. Here we go. All right. For surely I say to you, many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Say this, I'm privileged. To live in a time of open communication. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. It's not a time to go, well, I don't know what I want to do. Follow the lamb. Follow the light. As we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have what? Fellowship. I'm screaming. Fellowship with one another. 
And the blood of his son cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Ah, boy. I get so excited I could thread a sewing machine it running. Hey, hey. I don't like, uh, you know, I want us to be explosive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I blew up my brother once, explosive. You know, the wrong, wrong kind of explosive, but I did. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, the secret things belong to the Lord. Amos 3, 7. Surely, absolutely, God will not do anything on planet Earth without first revealing what he's going to do to his servants, the prophets. He reveals the secret thing. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his what? To who? His servants, the prophets. We're indispensable. You have to have the prophets if you're going to get to know what God's going to do. God reveals his secrets to the prophets. The prophets prophesied over the the people of God, and then the Holy Ghost comes and brings it to pass. Isn't that wonderful? Well, yes, you know. Okay, good gracious. Uh, All right, we got some stuff to talk about. Let's go to Colossians. You get, I, I want to show you a, a Colossians, a verse, because some people say, because uh, I, I tell people, the only way I can do my schedule is Colossians 1.29. Colossians 1.29 says, I do what I do by superhuman energy. Superhuman energy. I can wear these young bucks out. You know, they go, I'm about, uh, you know. Listen. God's strength is made perfect in our frailty. There it is, Colossians 1.29. To this end, I also labored, striving according to all his workings, which works in me so mightily. You, let, let me read that out of, the, out of the amplified version. All right, you ready? For this I labored unto weariness, striving with all the superhuman energy, which he so mightily enkindles and works within me. Say it. Super. Energy. energy by the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's that's why I like the I, that's why I like the Amplified Classic. Don't get the AMP. Uh, get the AMPC, and uh, uh, they're hard to find. Well, you can find some, I think. I don't know in the bookstore, but yeah. But you can look up. Uh, uh, and it's Kenneth Copeland. They're selling them. I think for what? I don't know. I, I, well, I do know, but okay. You say, Bobby. Uh, what, what, I'm trying to memorize the Bible now in every translation I can find. And that when I get up and preach, I amalgamate them together. And they go, brother, what translation are you using? All of them! <laughs> because one will show a little bit different than the other one, just like that verse we just looked at. For this I labor under weariness, striving with all the superhuman energy which he so mightily enkindles and works within me. Let's look at the sacred secrets, okay? Uh, look up there at Colossians 1, 26. The mysteries which were hidden from ages and generations from angels and men, but now is revealed to his holy people, the saints. Look! The mysteries which were hidden from ages and from generations, but now. Say, but now. That's why you need to get the shepherd's rod for this year until we we turned into a whole, there's a whole new paradigm in front of us right now. It says, and the time, say the time, and the time has arrived when the saints will possess the kingdom. And the word possess there means take over by force. You know, we, we can't come up to and go, well, to the devil and go, you know, God wants back his kingdom. We're, we're going to have to take back what the enemy's stolen. Remember, you remember when uh, King David said, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Shall I recover? And the Lord said, you shall. And he did. And it's a time to battle. We're, the, I'll tell you what's going to happen in the days ahead of us. We're going to be like in Nehemiah, building and battling at the same time. See, the, I'm telling you, the walls have pretty well crumbled. But uh, Isaiah 5.20 says, uh, Isaiah 21, 5 says, Arise, you princes, and all the shields, because a deadly foe is at, at the gate. One, one says at the door. I'm telling you, it's not a time for the church to go, Oh, boy, you know, it's so nice we're having our super seeker friendly meetings. I'm so, uh, listen, okay, Let's just visit a while. You want to? Well, sure. Y'all know Rick Joyner. 
Several years ago, Rick Joyner said, I want you to go with me. I said, where are we going? Colorado Springs. I said, okay. We get in the plane. We fly to Colorado Springs. And uh, we go to a meeting I, th- with these big league preachers. I mean, a whole room uh, full of these big time preachers. And they're there to discuss how to birth a super seeker friendly church. Yeah, there it is. This is the womb of it. It's Colorado Springs. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just a tag along. I'm an interloper. I wasn't invited. So here we are. Rick's at the table. I'm, I'm sitting over here. And uh, they're discussing how you could formulate uh, a, 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 a church where you could get them in in about 20 minutes and get them out in about 25 and not make them be, uh, feel at, uh, at, make them feel at ease even no matter. You know, no, listen. We're supposed to trouble the wicked. We're, we're supposed to get them under conviction. They're supposed to be falling at the altar, weeping, oh, hollering out, God have mercy on me. But it was all these guys that were pushing the super seeker friendly church. Several hours they talked. Oh, I was just, I wanted to, well, I wanted to puke. <laughs> these are leaders in the body of Christ, major leaders. And so they go all the way around telling what to do and how to do it and uh, dress more casual where you're not feeling, you know. Listen, you're, you're, you're a servant of the king. You shouldn't come in and flip flops and pull over. <laughs> you're a minister of the high courts of heaven. We need a little more dignity about some of that. But our problem is we're way too familiar with a God we barely know. He told me to tell you he's not near as easy to get along with as some preachers have made you out to be. Anyway, here we go. We're up there. And they go all the way around the table. And uh, they, they get, get to me, and I push myself out of the way because I'm an interloper. And they go, oh, no, Bobby. Since you're here, we'd like to hear what you have to say. <laughs> I said, all right. What you men are planning here will woefully fail the body of Christ. Yeah. Oh, they were turning off the recorders. And so the next thing, it was Rick. And so Rick's sitting there like that, and he's rubbing his gray beard. And he goes, I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with Bobby. See, they, were, they wanted us there for the prophetic to uh, put their ch- checklist on the super secret. And I told him, no, you're going to woefully fail the body of Christ. Oh, boy. After that, it seemed like the quickest way to grow a mega church was super seeker friendly. But... Have you noticed the history? Bill Hybel wrote the body of Christ a letter. See, he was chairing that meeting. Bill Hybel wrote the, the body of Christ a letter years later and said, we owed the church an apology. We thought we could, we could make disciples, but we only made church members and woefully failed the body of Christ. Put the same verbiage in there that we said in that room that day. I'm telling you, we don't need to try to sugarcoat the gospel. We better preach about the power in the blood. We better preach about the cost, the high cost of low living. I mean, what is a man profit if he gained the whole world, lose his own soul? Okay, but it, what I'm trying to say is we, we got to, somehow we got to get bolder. Not brass, not pushy, but bold. I was in a meeting, and I just preached what the Bible says. And this, this guy raised his hand, and he said, uh, Brother. I said, yes. He said, I'm a Christian homosexual. I said, sir, you're confused about one or the other. <laughs> See, you can't say, well, oh, that's good. There's no such thing as a saved practicing homosexual. You better read the Bible. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, but they came wicked in their mind, and God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do whatever, and and he said, "Listen, guys, uh, but you know it's so easy to go. Well, you know, I, I don't want to stir up anything. I do. I want to stir up the saints of the Most High God. Don't you think? On the day of Pentecost, he said, listen, 
I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take. They're they're murdering our babies right and left, like like they're mutilating these children. We can't put a, this can happen on our watch. So uh, listen, we're going to meet in every school board meeting and protest using our tax money to mutilate and maim our children. Well, you know, uh, that's them. No, it's us. Have you read the Bible? The heavens of heavens, that belongs to God. This earth is our responsibility. I didn't even know that verse was there. The heavens of heavens belong to God, but the earth he's given into the hands of men. I found it out when those 98 wildfires were burning. God said, how long are you going to let those wildfires burn? I said, I didn't know I was responsible. He said, who do you think is? He said, the heavens of heavens belong to God. The earth he's given into the hands of men. Remember, he said, let us make man in our own image and let's give them what? Kingdom control. Well, okay. You said, Bobby, I, I don't, I, I've got some friends and, you know, and they've got. No, listen, if you really are a friend, you'll tell the truth about the truth. The Bible said, if I, I'm screaming. The Bible said, if I tell you to warn the wicked man of his wicked way, and you don't warn the wicked man of his wicked way, and he dies in his sin, his blood will I have upon your hands. Now, does that sound like compromise is worth it? No. We better stand up for truth. We got to rescue truth so truth can rescue us. Here's Carolyn. Everything okay? You know, here, here's what some pastors say. Well, yeah, Come to, you could come do my podcast, but uh, I, I don't want us to get into any of these because they might cut my podcast. Who gives a rat if they cut off your podcast? I want to please God, not a whole bunch of people. Don't you? If you please him, that's all that really matters. Uh, but, you know, they, they're, they're going, well, I'm afraid I'll lose my, you know. Oh. If God can't make you a spot, you don't need a spot. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. I don't like preachers that mumble and apologize for nearly saying something. You ought to believe what you say and, and say what you believe. Now, this is true. You go to the doctor with a broke arm and he says, your ear is okay. You better get you another doctor. The church cannot, we cannot survive misdiagnosis any longer. We can't. Everything's not fine. I mean, we are at war. The whole earth has been shaken. Well, I'll get up here and talk to you a little bit. Carolyn, you okay? Now, you know, you, you want preachers to be dignified and, you know, articulate. I go to places and they have to translate me into English so they can translate me in whatever language it is. Yeah, that's true. I speak Texican. Y'all! Yeah, 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 boy, Heidi. I, I do like just being raw and real. Yeah, and listen, uh, if you'll stand up, God will stand up with you. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're not by ourselves. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, uh, I, you're in Colossians, aren't you? Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Here we go. I hope you can get it in Amplified Classic, but it'll work out. Here we go. In whom are hidden all the treasures of what? Wisdom and knowledge. All right, here it is. In him, being Jesus Christ, all the treasures of divine wisdom, comprehensive insights into the ways and purposes of God, and all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenments are stored up and lie hidden in him. That's why we need... That's, that's, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we need a deeper walk with Christ. Because he is the shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They run from other voices. There's a lot of strange voices out there. Your Bible said there will come a day when pe preachers will stand in the pulpit and teach doctrines taught by devils. That's what it says. But see, uh, I suspect any preacher that would say, it's okay for a man to marry a man. That's a doctrine of a devil. And, and people just go, okay, you know, pastor has some different beliefs. Throw him, listen, throw prayer on him till God changes his heart. You know what I mean? Anyway, you say, oh, Bobby, 
No. Uh, I, I believe in, I'm going to tell you, here we go. Pastors will call me to come sit into their, their, their meeting to help them give direction to their ministry. And they'll have their, uh, oh, they'll have their board of directors there. And so the Lord said, yes, I want you to go and help those that are crawling out for help. So I'm in a very prestigious church. And all oh, the pastors there, and he's, he's very educated. And we're there, and all of his elders are there. And so uh, he had said, now, now, Brother Bobby, whatever God shows you, we're, we, we want you to just, just, I said, thanks, thank you for the invitation. And so help me, this is, this is absolutely true. It's that the day that we were doing that uh, staff meeting with this prestigious church was a, the day they okayed and, and voted on same-sex marriage. And so... Here's the elders, the people running that church. And here's the little lady right beside me. Sweet little gray-haired lady, kind of blue-haired. You've seen, you know, they get the blue hair look. And uh, she's sitting there. And we're just getting started with the analyzing the things about the church. And she says, oh, oh, I just want to praise the Lord. My daughter can marry her mate. And, and I looked at the pastor, and he's going. I looked at the elders. I said, this is sickening. You're here praising God for the fact that your daughter gets to marry her lesbian lover. And you think God's in that? We, and I, I'm, I listen, we just poured it out. If you're going to have surgery, let's get in there and get what's out. Don't you think? Anyway. So, that's what happens. You're not, you're not going to call me and me sit there and go, okay, mm-hmm. oh boy, I don't, want, I don't want to shake up. You know what one pastor said? He said, I want to have Bobby, but he, he kind of rocks the boat. I said, no, I want to turn it over and see who wants back in. That's what we want to do. Turn it over and see who's desperate enough to claw their way back in. Because listen. We gotta, we've got to be, be ye clean and pure that bear the vessels of the Lord. Let your head lack no ointment. I'm telling you, we've got to, we've got to be holy. Be ye holy as I am holy, for without holiness, what? No person, no individual will see the Lord. Pursue peace and holiness, for without that, nobody's going to see the Lord. I'll get up here and uh, talk just a little bit. It's a good thing I can't play an instrument. Good Lord. Hell. Yeah, boy. I was off in Switzerland, and I told you all they'd brought a rapper there that was used my messages in a rap. But they had this, this fellow there, and he's a world famous, that, what do you call it? Uh, accordion. And boy, he would play, and it would just, it was wonderful. And I thought to myself, I'm nearly 80 years old, and I've never picked up an accordion. I thought there's no chance, no, no time like now. So I didn't know they was televising it all over the whole thing. I get, I get me the, uh, the organ, and, you know, and uh, it sounded like a herd of buffalo. <laughs> but anyway, I thought I better be keep preaching instead of trying to get in the music team. All right. Okie dokie. So I've invited myself. We're going to come and teach about the hidden mysteries of God, the secrets, the the mystic mysteries and the sacred secrets. They're all high. They're all hidden in Christ. But he said, you're a generation. Matthew 13, 16, and 17, blessed are your eyes they see, blessed are your ears they hear. Many long to see and hear, but they couldn't. But we can we're a generation that are, are, are in the time that God is speaking very boldly to his church. And so, anyway, here, here's, here's something. I don't know how my wife are un, un, un archived all of this, but this is the message right here on cassette tape that Bob Jones says is the most powerful message he ever heard on earth. 
he, we were together in, a, I just had an event with the Ancient of Days. And we're up there in a, a, a Albany, uh, o- Oregon. And uh, I wasn't going to ever tell anybody about this I- I- encounter here. Uh, it almost killed me. I saw the Ancient of Days. I finally screamed in and I said, who are you? He said, I'm the wisdom of the ages. I'm the voice of the prophets. I, and then he said, I am the Ancient of Days. And so I preached about it. Man, and so that, that's what happened. And this is where we find out what God really wants us to do as far as telling people who he is. He's, he's much more than what we're getting out. Every, every good and perfect gift has come down from him who is the father of lights in whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Now, what the heck does that mean? Unto God whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. It means God ain't fickle. Church is fickle. Culture is fickle. God is not fickle. Forever, O God, thy word is settled in heaven. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the words of our God will stand forever. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Got a lot to say, but I, I just want to kind of settle down and let you let you all. Uh... Okay. Lie hidden. Isn't that something? I, that, that's un... That, that's, that, if ever we are to search everything we can about the centricity of Christ, by him, through him, all things were created. He created all things. And by him and through him, all things cohere. What happened when Christ died upon the cross? Rocks begin to split. Graves begin to open. Because the creator had given up his life. I'm telling you, we're going to find out the supremacy of Christ Lord told me, said, I want you to go through every major ministry and teach about the centricity of Christ. He said, if my leaders don't know about the importance of the centricity of Christ, the people will be dull concerning the importance of the supremacy of Christ. By him and through him, all things hold together. We've got to understand how important it is to know everything we can about Jesus. No wonder he said, my people are destroyed for what? A lack of knowledge. The Bible said, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. And Okay. You, one of the things I think we need to understand is times and seasons and purposes and activities of God. Don't you? Yeah. yeah I love what it says. And they were all in one place. In, uh, isn't that amazing? That's what it says about the disciples. They were all in one place, in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Why were they in that place? You have to go turn back a few chapters in the Bible, and Jesus is just chatting, and here's what he says. Oh, go tarry in Jerusalem until you're indeed with power from bone high. You've got to have an ear to hear what he says, to follow his instructions so you'll be where you need to be and get what he's giving. They were all in what? One place in one accord because they decided they would listen and pick up and, and, and steered what God had said. Go tarry in Jerusalem. See, a lot of times God will give us a word and we'll forget it before we journal what God talks to you about. Write down things. You say, oh, Bobby, no. Write the vision and make it plain so you can run with it. The devil will try to steal it. You better believe it. If God gives you something, the devil's coming as quickly as he can to steal it. That's why it's so important to study the Word of God early. Well, you know, I, I, I'll do it when I get home from work. No, you'll be chasing the cat, kind of, all that kind of stuff. No, get up early and get in a quiet place. Matthew 6, 6. Matthew 6, 6 says, get in the quietest room of your house. Shut the door. I like that, don't you? Yeah. There it is. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and who, in the secret place. And the Father who is in secret will reward you in open. I'm telling you guys, prayer really does work. It really does. It's one of the most powerful tools we've got. And we've got to understand more about who we are. Can you believe this? It's almost unbelievable. Holy God, 
and hateful devil is asking every Christian the same question. What? How in the world could holy God and hateful devil be synchronized in what they're asking the saints of God? You want to know what question he's asking? Holy God, hateful devil. Here it is. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? We better learn who we are. I'll tell you who we are. We're joint heirs with Jesus. Anything, everything he has, we have equal share. Ask a lawyer if you know one. What does it mean to be an equal share? It means anything he has, you have. And, and he has all things. And then he says, all things are get all power and all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. And then he says, I'm going to give it to you. As my father has sent me, now I'm sending you. Wow, isn't that something? That's good. I like this bearded wonder guy back here. <laughs> there he is. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. How old are you? 31. 31. God bless you. I mean that. Uh, that's a, oh, can I pull on your beard just a little bit? I won't hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm a little, I'm a little jealous. Mine grows out and then out. Looks like a wild walrus. During the hunting season, I get to grow it out a little bit. I mean, I'm telling you, M and M's end up in it. Uh, Snickers and <laughs> yeah. It, it's pretty, pretty. So uh, I like that. Listen, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Blind Bartimaeus sat over there crying out, Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, have mercy upon me. What did the disciples say? Shut up. This is not for you. Whoo, boy, they were in tune, weren't they? And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they brought blind Bart. Uh, to Jesus and he said what is it you want me to do for you had Jesus lost the word of knowledge no we need to learn to declare what we need to happen and Jesus said what is it you want me to do and he said Lord that I might receive my sight and Jesus said go thy way thy faith has made thee whole and immediately right that second he received his sight and you, I just said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I'm expecting blind guys to get healed. Eyes to start being bright. Jesus is the same. He still raises the dead. He curses cancer. He sets people free from bondage. Whom the sun sets free is. Yeah. Oh, man. I know some people that spend more time talking about their plagues and problems than they do praising God. Yeah. Watch out. You're assigning that to yourself. You know, Uncle Ed had it. Esther had it. Even the doctors, they'll say, does this run in your family? Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> you need to go, no, because Colossians 1.13 says you're in a different family. <laughs> Colossians 1.13, pop that one up there. That'll be good. Colossians 1.13. All right. He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. He takes us out of death and bondage and brings us into life, love, and liver. Isn't it's the greatest journey we could ever take. Now you say, well, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm saved. Uh, there's some absolute acid test to prove if you're saved. Here's one. If you can habitually sin, if you can habitually sin and walk in darkness and not get chastened by God, look out. You're illegitimate. You have no birth papers. Because every son God receives, he chastens. If you be without chastisement, the Bible says you're a bastard or uh, you have no birthright, no, no birth papers. So you better not boast, <laughs> you know, I, I get out and I party and I, and I hang out with the chicks, you know, but, you know, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. God will carry you to the woodshed. If you be without chastisement, you're Ill illegitimate. God chastens every son he receives. So anyway, the best thing that can ever happen is God corrects you. I like that, don't you? Whew. Yeah. 
Carolyn knows one of my best friends of years ago was Thomas Earl Lambert. Thomas Earl, oh Lord. We were we got in more trouble than you could stack up. Anyway, I got saved, and old Thomas Earl, he'd call me at three in the morning, drunk as a monkey. Hello? The only one I got confidence in is you and Billy Graham. I said, Thomas Earl, call Billy Graham. Over and over, he, you know, Thomas Earl would call me. But anyway, God, God is amazing, isn't he? We've, we've seen a lot of our friends got saved. Boy, one of them is, this is one of the saddest statements. Uh, I, I was on the way preaching. I was going to a, a, a place to preach. And um, I'm driving to Athens, Texas. That's where Carolyn was raised. And I'm driving this vehicle. And I'm, my mind is set on what, where I'm going to preach. And I, I hear a car kind of roar, roar up beside me. And I look over out the window there. And there is a guy that used to be, uh, we used to run all over the place doing the most uh, uh, crazy things. And uh, anyway, uh, I hadn't seen him since I'd been saved. And guess what happened? He motioned me, and I pulled over, and, and we pulled over behind a, a service station there. And I'm getting out to go see him. And uh, he runs a line of cocaine down the middle of a Corvette. Uh, uh, and, and I said, no, I don't do that. I've been born again. Mm. Oh, guess what he said? His name's Jimmy. He could have been a movie star. You, don't, you couldn't find a more handsome man than this, this guy. And winsome. And uh, he had married into all money. His wife had more money, and her wife's dad, his wife's dad had more money than you could stack up. And he had anything he wanted. And here's what he said. I told him, I said, I've given my heart and my life to Jesus. I don't do that anymore. And I, I, I witnessed to him just a moment. And this, this is the part I hate. He looked at me, and he said, okay, if that's what you want, you go your way. I'll go mine. Got back in his Corvette and took off. I'll tell you what happened. Within three weeks of that night, he goes back home, got everything money could buy, and he found out his wife was cheating on him. So he gets his pump shotgun, walks into a club, cocks it back, shoots his wife's head off, pumped it, put it in his mouth, and shot the back of his head off. You go your way, I'll go mine. See, there's a way that seems right, and a man, the end of that way is a way of death. And I'm telling you guys, we better start making the message really plain. We need to tell them there's only two destinations, heaven or hell. Boy, I got invited to the state of uh, Texas down at their university there in Austin. And I was assigned to preach to the whole class. The, the whole student body had to come, mandatory at that time. And I'm gonna, uh, they, uh, my assignment they gave me was to preach about life and death. I said, God! These kids are in the flower of their life, and you want me to preach about life and death? He said, yes. I said, why? He said, they don't understand the finality of death. They played so many video games where you dissolve and you come back. So here we go. If you've ever got into a hostile crowd, I was in one. Here we are. I, I was in a little side room over there, and they filled the whole thing there, and, and uh, School. So I come out there like this. Oh, they're madder than a wash, sitting on the end of their seat. They got to listen to some fat guy preaching. So, yeah. so here's what happened. You ready? I walk out there. And I said, uh, I'm here to talk to you about life and death. And I said, let me read you a verse. And I read out of the book of James, what is your life? It's even a vapor which appears for a moment and then vanishes away. You listen, what is your life? It's even a vapor. It's like a morning fog. It's like the steam from a tea kettle. You see it for a moment and then it's gone. What is your life? It's even a vapor. Boy, I took my, I, I quoted it three times. Then I took my Bible and I go, wham! I said, if that's all life is, it's the biggest joke ever perpetrated on humanity. See, then I had him. They're sitting up on the edge of their seat. So I told them what real life is. Here's what your life is. My life is a readying room, a time we prepare for eternity. 
choose you this day whom you will serve. You don't get a mulligan on this thing. You're one heartbeat away from your eternal home. You make the choice. God's already made the choice. God is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of Christ. So if God had his way, but God has given you something he deems more powerful than his own sovereignty. What? Free will. He's given you the will to reject him. But I'm here to beg you and plead with you, run to Christ, run to the cross. Throw yourself upon the mercy of God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from him. Listen, we have got to get the message into the marketplace. And we've got to present it in a way that these kids can understand it. Now, I'll tell you about these kids. You can fool their mom and dad, but you can't fool them. They can spot a fake and a phony a mile off. One of the things they want, they want, they want something real. Something real. I get to speak in the largest youth conferences in the world. And man, we have a time. I'm going to tell them the truth about the truth. And you know, some of them get so mad. Oh, they'll, you know, they'll. But you can expect that. Look in the Bible. I got convicted. Paul says, Paul the great apostle, here's what he said in his word. My light affliction, which is but for a moment. Light affliction. Have you read, wrestle with the beast in peril of shipwreck, in peril of robbers, in peril of false brothers? My light affliction. I go, I must be a wuss or something because, listen, we got to quit being so touchy. I don't know why they did that. Well, they're full of the devil. That's why they did it. So what you need to do is challenge the devil. Yeah, can you believe this? I pastored a, a Baptist church, and I got, I'd get there early at church to do a little studying. And so I'm there at my desk, a door knocked. God said, answer the door. I said, oh, man. I answered the door, and a guy comes in, and he, I said, what do you want? And he said with glistening eyes, I want to know what your God's going to do. I said, oh, that's simple. He's going to cast the devil out of you. So that's what we did. We cast the devil out of this guy. Cool, man. Yeah. My God wants to know what your God's going to. I said, man, simple. Going to cast the devil out of him. Cast the devil out of him. And he was happy. Yeah. Here, here's just, here, there, there's some stories, man. Uh, the two, two towns over from where I lived and pastored. Uh, uh, I get a call, and uh, the sheriff from where I lived uh, said, we're in trouble. I said, what is it? Uh, a little uh, middle, middle school girl, not high school, middle school, uh, had manifested and tried to kill the principal. So the police came, and they couldn't control her. She could take the policeman, whirl them, and throw them up against the wall. A little bitty girl. And see, the, the policeman, I already had a history with him. Is this true? He came to me once. He said, Bobby, he said, I need help. I said, what do you need help for? He said, I've been getting reports about this a house down there. And said, I went down there to, uh, to check it out and see what was going on. And said, the woman was there. And I told her, ma'am, I'm going to search this premise. And she said, no, you're not. And he said, ma'am, I got a, a warrant here. I can search anywhere I want to. And he said, Bobby, I started to a back room there. And said, there was a cat laying on a pedestal there. He said, when I got near the cat, said the cat raised up. He said, a lion couldn't have roared anymore. He said, all the strength left me. He said, I'm shaking like a leaf. And I said, oh, go. He said, can you help me? I said, yeah. So we go up there and cast the devil out of the witch that was running the whole deal. But anyway, then he realized that we had, so he calls me about this girl. He said, there's a young girl over here, da, 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 she, we can't control her. And I said, they, they, someone want to shoot her? And I said, I said no. And, and so they took the net like you catch her, a dog, a wild dog, and threw this over the little girl. And she could throw these big, these big guys around. So they, they bring her to my office. There I am, First Baptist Church Bullard in the office. It's full of policemen. They're scared spitless. 
They're white as a sheep sheet, and their lips are blue, and they're standing against the wall, and there she is. And here's the cop that knows me. There she is. They put her in the chair there, and she's covered up with like you catch a rabid dog. And she's bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down in the chair. And, and she was mumbling, I got the power. I got the power. And God said, don't even look at her. She's going, I got the power. I got the power. And the Lord said, now look straight at her and tell her the only power is in the blood of Jesus. I said, the only power is in the blood of Jesus. She was thrown up out of the chair, up to the, about the ceiling, does a flip like this and comes down, and the net falls there. And she's totally just a little girl. Just like that. See? We got to be instant in season and out of season. You know, you say, oh, I don't want anything like that. Well, you're part of an army. And we got to show up and take a stand. Jeremiah 20, 11. Put, could you put Jeremiah 20, 11 up there? He said, the Lord is with me as what? A mighty warrior, dread champion. Here we go. Okay. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, uh, mighty, awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their er everlasting confusion will never, ever be forget forgotten. Isn't that something? The Lord is with me as what? A dread champion. If you study it, he's never lost a battle. I did a study, I gotta, I'm going to quit in just a moment. I, I did a study on some of the craziest battle plans ever mentioned. They're in the Bible. The craziest battle plans ever mentioned are in the Bible. Jonathan and his armor bearer. One sword among them, a whole army above them on a mountain cliff up there. And here's Jonathan and here's his little armor bearer. And Jonathan says to his armor bearer, hey, buddy, I got a plan. What's your plan, sir? My plan is this. We're going to get out from under this. We're going to get out from under this rock canopy here. And we're going to step out here like this. And we're going to look up there at the, uh, a whole army. And we're going to go, hey, you. Yeah, you. And he says, if they say to us, come up here, we want to show you something, we know we got them. Now, that's the craziest, craziest battle plan I've ever heard. These guys are on, on, they're above, and they've already got the venue of being above. There's only one sword among uh, Jonathan and his armor barrier. That's the dumbest thing. We're going to step out, and we're going to go, hey, hey, you, yeah, you. And if they say, come up here, we want to show you something, we know we got them. And here's what gets me. The little armor barrier said, yes, sir. Anything God's put in your heart, I'm with you. Amen. Boy, today, the old elder board would be wearing their thumbs out. We, the pastors, lost his mind. Oh, Lord, we've got to get him some help. Yeah, no. If we can get some armor barriers like he had, whatever God's put in your heart, I'm with you. And it said they crawled. Say crawled. I street, uh, street fault, that, you, that's the worst position you can get in, in a fight. You're going to get kicked somewhere, <laughs> head or other. And so anyway, there they are, they're climbing up. And it said they get up there, and as they walk by, the glory of God would knock down the enemy, and they come by, whoop, whoop, whoop. See, if you do what God yeah. says for you to do, it'll work out like God says it'll work out. But if you come up with your own half-baked plan, hmm. It won't work. You'll disgrace yourself and disappoint the Lord. See, there's a way that seems right. Ends of that way is the ways of death, didn't it? You say, well, how can I know the real will of God? Study the Word of God. The Word of God is concealed in the, the Word of God is concealed with the will of God in it. So get in there and study and listen and discern, okay? You say, oh, uh, nothing like that's going to happen. You better look out. We're, we're, in a, we're aliens in this earth. You understand that? Okay. So, I've invited myself to come back and do uh, Sacred Secrets and Mystic Mysteries. A school, we'll put it on the board. You can see it. And we'll have fun. Don't go to church and not have fun. You know, I like old people and kids. They ain't got filters. They, they just pour it out. I don't like you. You're loud. 
I go, I'm not so wild about myself either, you know. Don't you like old people? Oh, man. And little old kids. I had my grandson, little old bitty thing, in a car seat next to me, and I was driving the pickup, and he goes, he talked with a lift back then. He said, Papa Priest, you smell like you've eaten something yellow. Yeah. <laughs> that means you need a mint, man. Yeah. All right. Now, I, I want to I wanna just talk to you about you. Where are you at with your knowledge of the Bible? I'm telling you, it, 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 the more you study it, the more you realize it. You barely know him. That's going to be one of the great blessings of heaven. For all eons of eons of eternities of eternities is going to be every millimoment. God is unfurling more of who he is. We'll never get there and be like a, a lampoon vacation. Remember Chevy Chase and Lampoon Vacation? They finally get to the Grand Canyon. He goes, yep, yep, and jumped back in the Suburban and took off. We're not going to get to heaven and go, yep, yep. We're going to be totally amazed. These angels that have watched God from eternities, they still go, holy, holy. That's going to be our reaction. Holy, holy. You understand all of this in heaven too? Heaven's really real. My mom died and got to go there. Yeah, she had never read, she had never read an afterlife book. She came back from, from being dead. And so I, I said, Mom, tell me about it. She punched me on the arm just like that. And she said, I wasn't one bit afraid. I was right here one moment and right up there the next. She said, I went up to a tunnel full of light. I get in a room full of light, but it's not light like we know. And said so there was a window, but it's not windows like we know. There was curtains, but curtains not like we know. Looked like it was alive. And he said, the Lord was there and said, do you want to see out? She said, oh, yes. And she said he ran his arm through the curtain and pulled it back like that. She said, Bobby, everything on earth, everything with the smallest thing of life, begin to praise God yeah. in unison, begin to move in harmony. The whole earth is wanting us to step into our true identity. Isn't that something? My mom, she explained all about heaven and her, her dialect and her way she talked. And then she said, the Lord looked at her and said, the next time you come, you get to stay. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's gra gra. That's my mother. Oh, how would you like to have been, had me as your offspring? <laughs> Whew. I was a bit energetic. You guys talk about your kids being hyper. Whatever levels about, you know, I was, I was that way. I got up just, I was uh, very impulsive. Yeah, remember, I was watching TV, and uh, they, it showed a, a man riding a burrow across the desert. And I go, I was a grown guy. I go, well, I can't say exactly what I said, but I Mexico. So I wrote, got up and wrote my mama a note on a paper sack, threw it down the floor, and went up and robbed a station, got some money from a, a, a food station up there, bought me a ticket for Mexico, and there I went. Down there because I, I saw a guy riding a burro. This is when President Kennedy got shot, so my mother gets up that morning, finds a note, gone to Mexico! She thought it had something to do with assassination. Yeah. Thank God I wasn't involved. I got involved in Mexico, let me tell you. Who stabbed? It's crazy, crazy. Carolyn and I went back after I got saved and started preaching. Went back to the same streets I stood on and preached the gospel there. Isn't that amazing? Trying to redeem the time, you know. And, but I tell you what, grew up without any restraint. Whew. And. A ch I'm a living proof a child left to himself will bring the parent shame. You know. Yeah. My mama, bless her heart. I used to hook my car to the back of her car. My mom, uh, she worked at a, a television, uh, a place where they made television cabinets. And uh, she, her part was running the glue, ma glue machine to glue the wood together. And she smoked, but she shouldn't, you know, she, you shouldn't smoke. But she smoked Winston cigarettes about that long. And she couldn't smoke in the plant for she'd blow the plant up. But just as soon as 3.30 came, she'd get in her little Chevrolet 
an F 54 Chevrolet six cylinder steering wheel about this big. And so here she'd get out and she'd fire up a cigarette. And so she'd put the cigarette in her mouth, and I'd be laying behind the, uh, the stop sign or something. She'd drive by, boom. I had a 57 Chevrolet, two four barrel carburetors and uh, headers. So she's got her cigarette in her mouth like this. So I run her behind her and hit her car with my car and hook my bumper on her bumper, and I get her up to about 90. <laughs> she can't let go because she's got the cigarette in her mouth. I mean, I'm skidding her down the road. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd cut loose from her and she'd take off like that I'd get home she would be lifted what you're going to kill us all young man i go no mama it's alright yeah. Yeah, yeah see how would you like to have a kid like me it's pretty exciting yeah you ever been pushed down the road 90 something miles an hour remember this Chester Kennedy I keep talking about he drug me down the highway on a tricycle 82 miles an hour I'm here to tell you you can't get off a tricycle doing 82 miles an hour I don't care how acrobatic you are but it did I got on a tricycle not pedaling it was Chester's sister Chester's sister always ratted us out. But anyway, I looked over there, and she, her tricycle was under a peach tree or something. And so I got the tricycle. We put a rope around the throttle and tied it onto a Lincoln. And I said, pull me around the yard. Chester pulled me around the yard. And that, that was not victorious enough. The largest hill in East Texas is Murray Hill. That's right. At, they, they lived at the crest of Murray Hill. I said, get out on the road. He pulls this skim down Lincoln out on the road and I'm behind there tied with a rope and he gets up to 82 miles an hour. Have you ever heard the racket? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All you can do is just hang on like a monkey on a pole. <laughs> Drug me 80 something miles an hour. That's exhilarating. Yeah. Yeah, see? Can you? That's what one of my friends said. Your angels are up there going, tag me out. I've been too long with Bobby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. Me and my brother used to sit in the backyard and shoot cigarettes out of one another's mouth with a 22 rifle. My mom would come to the door and holler, hey, you boys quit wasting them shells. They cost money. <laughs> See, that's how I grew up. Just kind of. Bless her heart, my mom, she couldn't train us. My dad was dead in a, from a venereal disease. and His sin almost cost me my life. My mom wrote a coat hanger in her womb, tried to pull me out because the doctors told her the baby in your belly will be afflicted with the same disease, killing his father. So mom was desperate. She already had two children, one born crippled. And so uh, when she ran the coat hanger in, the hand of the Lord pushed me aside. That's in the Bible. He covered me with his hand in my mother's womb. I told Carolyn about it before my mother ever told me. And uh, what Carolyn said, Bobby, nobody could know what happened to him when he's a fetus. I said, me and John the Baptist do. <laughs> got full of the Holy Ghost in mommy's tummy. But I know we got to go. It's getting late. But where are you going? Listen, when you get to where you're going, where are you going to be? What's your final destination? You better make sure that you've given your heart and your life to Christ. Because the devil, the devil will say, oh, it, doesn't, it does matter. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Don't fall into that lie. Well, the plan of salvation is so complicated. No, it ain't. Did you read the Bible? The Bible said the, the the way of salvation is so simple that a wayfaring fool need not ear therein. I said, God, give me that in Texagon. If you got enough sense to get back to your house, you got enough sense to get saved. Amen. Salvation is not complicated. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that he's been raised from the dead, you'll be saved. Yes, then you need to follow him. And we're going to have baptism in a moment, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. 
be somebody here that feels they okay. need to be We're going to have a baptismal service. We're going to baptize Zach here and anybody else that feels like God is compelling them to be baptized. Yeah, now baptism is, is it's a portrait of what's happened to you. Dead to sin, buried, raised again to new life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things become bright and brand new. Now, baptism is important. It cuts off the enemy, according to the Bible. And I'm telling you, so um, uh, Zach wants to be baptized this morning. Maybe there's somebody else that, if you've trusted Jesus Christ and have not yet followed him in biblical baptism, that's your next step. Uh, it really is. Now, baptism doesn't save you. It's just evidence that you have been saved. You understand that? Okay, so we'll, we'll be over there in a moment. We, we did a baptismal service. Carolyn can testify to this. First Baptist Church in Bullard. And so uh, a little old lady had been, uh, she was wanting to be baptized. And I had some big old guys to help me. And so here's what happened. Uh, I'm, I'm back there putting on some, uh, uh, supposed to put on some waders and stuff like that. And, and so I, I, I start to step out there and I prayed. I said, oh, Lord, I pray you'll really bless this baptismal service. And he I stepped in out like that, and as soon as my foot stepped in the water, the Holy Ghost fell. I barely could stand up. I had to push myself up against the back of the baptistry to keep from falling out. And I thought, oh, man. God said, I'm going to show up and show off in the baptismal waters today. So I had my two big old heifers, Ronnie, big old gorilla-looking guy. And the little lady, he comes and he's heffing her down the stairs into the water. So I've got her there, and here I am, and I go, we're here today for this baptismal service. And, uh, and so I'm telling them about baptism. And I hear, I look, and the lady's gone. <laughs> She's under. She fell under the, you know, I'm down there like that. Don't put waiters on. Get down like this. I pulled her up. It was like pulling up an elephant. And she's little. I got her like that. I said, Ronnie. And Ronnie's big, strong, a watermelon farmer and a pig farmer. I said, Ronnie, come here. So Ronnie comes to take his first step. It's, he, he took the first step in the, to the baptismal pool and falls out in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> now he's under there bubbling like a fish. Every person that touched the water fell out in the Holy Ghost. Here's what happened. We had a, I don't know what you'd call it. Everybody jumped up. I'd take the water and throw it on them. They'd fall out. Is this true? We finally got the old lady baptized, but listen. He said, I'm going to show up in the baptismal pool. When he tells you something, he means it. This is all true. And they'd run by the baptismal pool and I'd throw water on them. Yeah. See? Why walk if you can skip? You know what? Yeah. This is all true. You ever fell out in the Holy Ghost? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. So we're going to have a baptismal service right over there in that pool. Unless, the, unless something really breaks out and then we we'll just jump, you know. Yeah. Listen. If you ever, can I, I, this last story and then I'm, I'm here. Here we go. I got invited down to do another preacher's family's wedding. And they lease this old church in a, a, a Atlanta. And uh, he's a well-known pastor, and so uh, uh, they lease this big old church, and it's old and very, very uh, beautiful on the inside. So I'm back there in my tuxedo, fixing to do a, a formal wedding. And so I, I, back my, I bowed my head a little bit like this, and here's what I said. Oh, Lord, I want you to be glorified in this service. And that's it. So I step out from the, there in my tuxedo. I step out like this. There's a big thing of flowers there, and there's all the people. And I turned around like this, and the Holy Ghost fell. I couldn't stand up. I, and I leaned hard against this thing like that. And the Lord said, don't you ever tack my name on something you don't expect me to show up at. And guess what happened? People started falling out in the Holy Ghost. I mean, falling out in a church wedding. 
and there was two, they had some little ladies hired that were supposed to be supervising the wedding. And these people were falling out like hardwood. And they grabbed some uh, uh, ammonia. <laughs> they go, <laughs> I go, I go, it's, that's, that, that's not what they need. But it was the wildest thing. People jumped up, ran, danced in the Holy Ghost in a wedding. See, I don't want just to play games. I want God to show up and do what he wants to do. He, he's capable of doing anything. If we'll just surrender and yield to him. And you'll be surprised what God will do to you and through you if you'll let him. Amen. Have you ever been, find this urge to do something and you go, oh, no. No telling what they'll think. Go ahead and do it. It don't matter much what they think. It matters what God says. Just to be quite honest with you, one of my keys for success is swift and complete obedience. Do as quickly as you can, as thoroughly as you can, anything. He asks you to do. That pastor that I married, his daughter that we were talking about, were at his church once. Charisma Magazine was there with their cameras and all of that, Steve Strang, and building full of people. And the Lord said, I have something for Pastor Mark. I said, God, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I said, Pastor Mark, come here. Pastor Mark came out there. And I'm waiting for God to tell me what I'm going to do to Pastor Mark. Here it is. You ready? Charisma Magazine. All the people. The Lord said, I want you to suck a hickey on Pastor Mark's neck. What? Yep. Yeah. Whoo. That, that makes raising the dead seem easy. I called Pastor Mark over there and, I, and, and all those people. I said, uh, Pastor Mark, I got to do something. He said, Bobby, do whatever. God, is. that was, I leaned over there. I sucked me a hickey there about the size of a small tomato hanging out the side of his neck. Redder than these shirts here. I said, God, what in the world was that? He said, the pastors will need to be marked by the prophetic, and uh, that's a passion mark. The pastors are going to have to have a passion for the prophetic because the prophetic needs to mark the pastors. And I thought, good Lord, we could have done that in the green room or something like that. <laughs> but, but that's true, isn't it, Carolyn? It happened. That happened, didn't it? But anyway, see... There's a song that says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Now, how simple that is. It's easy to sing, hard to obey. All right. I got some bloopers. Yeah. I talked to these ladies. They'll know me. I'm telling the truth. I went to Washington, D.C. Back then, uh, the, they, packed, they parked the pastor's helicopter, I mean, the the president's helicopter right across the street and I'm in a church there and there's 25 pastors dressed immaculately up there dressed immaculately and I'm back in the green room Lord I'll say anything I'll do anything and he said okay good I want you to I want you to come out and I want you to come to the pulpit and I want you to look out across the congregation most it was packed to the hill several thousand businessmen Business women, most were in politics or economics or money. Twenty-five pastors dressed immaculately. <clears throat> the Lord said, "Do what I tell you to do." I said, "I will." He said, "Look at all the people and say, I'm sorry. I won't be able to speak here today because you're too white for me." What? I'm the only white guy there. It's an all black congregation 25 pastors back here have you ever heard 25 pastors gasp <laughs> I have that, and I said God what he said you'll have to declare it again they're shocked I said they're shocked <laughs> these pastors they're, they're stiff now they're leaning forward like 
Anyway, I said it again. I'm so sorry. I won't be able to speak here today because you're too white for me. My heart's going. <laughs> All of a sudden, a wave over there in a catacomb, a, a hallway, I hear it. A little bitty black lady. It, biggest thing about her was her hat. And she came running down the front of the church with a handkerchief going, Glory to God! I seize it! Glory to God! Holy Ghost fell, knocked all the 25 pastors down, knocked the church down. You know what she saw? She saw that there was a compromising spirit trying to become somebody they weren't when God wants them to be them, yielded to him. Glory to God! I got back in the green room and I said, Glory to God! Somebody seen it. Yeah. That little old lady, isn't that something? See? That's, you have to do some things that people go, I would never do that. Well, that's not why you're not up here. Yeah. Yeah. Obedience is what? Better than sacrifice. Well, Pastor, you, you come tell them what we need to do about any baptism we find here. You ready? Good. We'll work on the school thing later. Amen.